Hello everyone and welcome. My name is James Beaumont, the Global Ambassador for 1922 by JM Kuhn. And we're here currently filming in the UK for this current webinar. So a little bit about the location where we're filming, because you may be wondering, where is this? Is this where James works? Well, actually, no, it isn't. I thought I'd play around with the environment, the location, just to create a bit more of an atmosphere to the webinar. I've noticed a lot of people doing this over the pandemic, using the locations, the quiet time, that we might as well use these places to create that atmosphere. So I love this place. It's got a bit of texture, raw feeling to this men's webinar. Forgive me though, we're having a few intruders with some uh, seagulls. So you may see them, uh, my, may hear, you won't see them, but you may hear them having a little argument. So forgive me about that. So guys, what is male grooming? What does it mean? What does the word mean? Well, it's all about fashion for the man and creating that image. So creating everything for that gentleman from the whole image itself. So, you know, when you see a person, a gentleman, you may look at his fashion, but when you actually connect and talk to him, you're looking at his eyes for the eye contact, you're looking at his face, the most important part, and that's where we come in. So through that today, I'm gonna to take you through men's fashion this summer, how it's current, and men's hair trends, how they complement together in this current time. From that, using the inspiration, I'm gonna show you two individual hairstyles. One more of a textured approach, being more of a layering technique, one being more of a graduated look, more of a sculptured shape. So the two are quite different. I'm gonna show you the best ways of using 1922 at your best capability. So hopefully this webinar is for you. So let's begin, let's get in the mood for male grooming. So in a minute, you're gonna see some mood boards that are gonna arise. And this is gonna give you a great idea of the color spectrum for the collections for this summer trends. So as I was pulling inspiration, finding research, I come across Emporio Armani straight away, where they had something really interesting with the environment that they were producing the catwalk within. The color spectrum of the whole environment really complemented the colors of the collection for that day. We've seen lots of these total print wares where you see the same pattern above as the same pattern, for example, the shorts. We've seen a lot more of this soft pastel palette as well. These soft pastel shades such as pinks, blues, creams, were really interesting coming from Philip Plain and also Dior. Tom Ford were giving out more of this vibrant acid pop colors for the guy that really wants to stand out. Now, if we flip to the next mood board, you'll see deeper tones to the color spectrum. We see more of these soft creams, tan colors, different shades of tan colors and these beigey colors. Almost gives this vibe of a more of a safari look. We see more of these Bermuda shorts, high socks, leather sandals. With Balmain, we're seeing more of these wider trouser length, longer lengths, almost gives this 70s vibe. So let's dig a little bit deeper into the men's fashion now and how hair and fashion is really complementing each other within the catwalks. So what we're seeing is that the pandemic has slightly changed the catwalk look on things. Because before, of course, we would have the atmosphere of a crowd as the catwalk would come through. But now due to the pandemic, there is no crowd. So what they're trying to do is really think about the visual consumer that is watching the catwalks to engage motivation and to keep watching. So we're seeing more of these tight angles with the cameras playing with the music and the models acting to the music to really get it engaged as much as possible. So Prada, for example, was an absolutely incredible catwalk. As we're seeing in their hair, it was more of this 60s to 70s vibe. But when I say that, reducing the volume, so more of these hug heading shapes. We're seeing these page boy looks, slight moddy with disconnection, as you can see, with longer length externally and wider lengths around the sideburns and a slight mullet. Of course, mullets are coming back in. So if anybody saw, there was Dior's full collection last year by Kim Jones. It was absolutely incredible. The creative platform was from behind. It was this massive galaxy of bright colors. The color spectrum of the clothes with all these different grays, blue grays, acid pop colors that really come out from the patterns or perhaps popping out just from the accessories. The hair, we're seeing more of these real sharp bowl cuts, undercuts. This root stretch of a deeper shadow from the roots into this more vibrant color towards the ends. 
We see these central partings from the gelled looks with a dip of color. So I think it's quite creative, but it's not overly creative. I could certainly see this on the Coombe platform for Street Salon. So there's one other platform that I'd like to touch on, and that is online shopping, because this is a great platform to gather inspiration, but also to help your consultation. So there's a brand such as Zara, who's doing absolutely fantastic at the moment for their websites. As when you go on, there may be an editorial page, which almost creates a story about a model or perhaps a famous person. They put a bit of grain towards the picture, a bit of tone, filter, to create an atmosphere within the environment or a time scale. What also is fascinating is when they capture the clothes, say the upper body or the lower body, they're really getting lots of really creative editorial shots, which inspire the consumer to really engage within the photo, to think about his fashion, what will go with that top that he likes, but also the hair, it completes the whole image because their hair also helps the fashion, which creates the whole look, the whole image, the whole character. So we've looked at fashion and hair, how it complements each other. Now let's get on with the hair cutting. I'm gonna show you one look first, how I feel like it's really trending at the moment and it's gonna really suit my model that I'm gonna show you. So looking at this reference or this mood board, you can see all of these different pictures, images have a very similar design. But what we're seeing is more of this external perimeter of the haircut where it's longer, slight mullet and texture towards the fringe, perhaps separation in the fringe to really give that focus point. To open up the face, really complement the facial features, the jawline, the strength within this face. But what you can see by all the different references is that they're all similar to the design, but perhaps different within the texture of that individual person. So this is the type of design that we're going to create on our first look. But it also depends on his hair texture naturally. So let's get our first model. So guys, here's my lovely model, Joshua. Great looking guy. He has great facial features, good jawline, great hair to work with for this design. Now, I know Josh quite well. He's a client of mine as well as a model. And I know from his lifestyle, from always talking to him over time, that he's a bit of a workaholic. He works quite a lot. But after work, he likes to socialize quite a lot. And he's quite a trendy guy. He wears Converse's, so this gives me a little incline to the type of fashion that he has. And his nature of his character, he's quite a relaxed guy. He likes to go surfing. So this gives me an incline of the type of guy that he is as well. And he always says to me when he comes out of the sea, that the texture that the salt brings creates a bit more of a gripping texture to his hair. So already I know a product that's going to be perfect for him. His hair's a little bit dry, so we'll think about that as well for the end result on the product. So with this design, we're going to create some disconnection where it really reduces the density through the internal part, but leaving the external a little bit longer, especially around the back where we see this slight mullet, but reducing the density around the occipital bone area. Through the top, it's going to be quite textured. The fringe is going to be a textured point, but it's going to frame his eyes and his facial features. So I think this is going to be a really lovely design for him. Now we're going to create the map, and I'm going to show you about the map, the details within the map that is going to create this look. So guys, here is the map of the design. I'm just going to take you through this. Basically, what we began to do is all of the hair that wants to go forward, we separated from all the hair that wants to come back, analyzing his growth pattern from the crown. So what we have is this top box zone from the top of the rounding of the head. Then we have this contour, which is the rounding from the top towards the sides. I'll indicate to the importance of this later, which really creates the design of this haircut. So we have the side panel, we have the fringe, frontal area sectioned out of the way. It's slightly diagonal here, so we can keep some of the strength towards the fringe on the recession area here, so keep some of the hair density. That's the important about MAP, is really analyzing hair density to organize your thought. So around the back here, we have this trapezoid section coming from the edge of the contours down to your occipital bone. So all the hair underneath, we're gonna take away the density, but leave the length towards the bottom. So at the beginning, we're gonna start the haircut from the back and then moving towards the sides so we can focus on getting rid of all the density first. Then all the layers on top are gonna to be cut so it falls on top 
of the layers underneath. Okay guys, so step one, we're gonna focus on all of this area at the nape. I'm gonna use the tool, a razor, so we have a lot more of texture towards this cut in this area. I think this is gonna give us a more, uh, more textured result where it gives us more raw effect towards this perimeter area. So I'm gonna focus on from the point of the abscissical bone, the top, going towards the corner of the nape. So we're gonna create horizontal sections. We're gonna analyze to the kind of length that we wanna go for. So I'm thinking, you know, I don't want it too short. I don't want it to stick out around the obstetrical bone. So probably about an inch or two in length. Now I'm gonna be cutting inside my fingers. I need to think about the elevation, how high I'm going. The higher we go, the lighter it's gonna be. Also, every section below is gonna come up to that stationary guide. So I need to analyze how short that's gonna be by traveling all the way up. So yeah, that feels pretty good. So we take our first section, cutting inside our fingers. So as we come in lower, lower, the section's becoming a little bit wider. So again, elevating up to that first guideline. So working on the side of the section, just elevating straight up. And now I'm just waiting for my guideline just to jump away. And that's my indication from when to cut. So now we have these two different lengths, shorter at the top to longer at the bottom. So this is gonna be a lot tighter around the obstetrical bone, but flare out with length towards the bottom. So when we work on the sides, I'm gonna match the same body positioning. By doing so, we're gonna use the head position and where we are standing around the chair. So slightly tilt his head over, and now I'm mimicking the same position that I'm gonna work on from below. So again, horizontal section from above. So following the guideline from the back towards this point here. Again, head position, body position. Take my first horizontal section, find my guideline from the right hand side here and match. We're going to focus on the sides now. So now moving from the back towards the sides, we're going to follow our guideline, but I'm going to result more into the scissor tool now. Just because the hair is a little bit different, a little bit wispier towards the sides here, so I need a bit more control uh, of the density, but also of the shape. We're going to focus on more of this triangular layer, so it's longer towards the bottom, but shorter towards the top. To help me do that, we're gonna slightly put his head position on the side. This just helps you to create that angle and your body position. So, using some of that guideline at the back. We're gonna create more on base, so it's tight around the ear here. Putting our comb into the root. Fingers go in, elevate slightly out, and start pivoting with your fingers. So you create that more length towards the bottom. Take away most of the length, because he's got a bit of a curl to it. It's quite hard to get that chip, chip in effect. So again, cone goes in, fingers go in, elevate and slightly pivot. And we're just gonna chip in. Now I'm taking note of how high my elevation is. It's coming above the parting line. So I know when I work on the other side, that for the get best balance, I'm focusing on where that is.
And we're gonna work on base. So both sections meet together in the middle. This mimics the head shape, so a round shape. So now when I come in front from the ear to the temple area, we're going to create more length. So we're going to over direct each section back. So when it comes to the styling, the shorter hair is going to have a domino effect to push the hair forward. Now the comb is going to come towards me to push that projection towards me to create that over direction. Okay, so now we're just going to basically repeat this on the opposite side. So now we have all of this hair density moved at the top, which creates a little bit of flatness, more longer length towards the bottom. So now we've done that, we're gonna work on our contour areas. Now the reason being for this is so we're gonna take this out, so we take away this corner, so it reduces all of this density in this area. So we're gonna take away this section, we're gonna have a horizontal section of this zone, take away that. And we're gonna follow the guide from below, but we're gonna come over the opposite side of the head. So we can pull that elevation. So we're coming straight out from the head. You can go a bit deeper, a bit of chunks within just to help texturize that even more if you want, or slight slices just to break it up towards the ends. So now we just follow that with the next section above. So if you have too much hair, then take most of it away, but you need enough length to be able to chip in to texturize. So now you can see that it's all quite flat towards the head here. We're going to copy that on the opposite side now. So we're going to focus on this layering at the top now. So it's going to fold over the top of this area below. 
We're going to work in vertical sections. And wherever the head rounds, we're going to over direct to the previous. So we're extending weight and length to create more of a flat shape horizontally. So between the corners, it's going to be getting longer and it's going to fall over the top. So for this area, we need to analyze the length from below because this needs to overlap the disconnection. So we're going to work subdivide, so taking away more of the top area. We're going to be working above our fingers to create more of a layering technique. We're going to find where the guide is below and we're just going to jump probably just near, near enough an inch above. Cut it blunt and then chip in. Follow the guideline. Now this area here, I don't wanna, I don't wanna create volume up here. So we're gonna slightly elevate a little bit further up just to slightly deflate the shape. So take away some of that length. and then chip in. So that just falls directly over the top. So we're just gonna half that central section, clip this out of the way, and working towards our right. So take away some of this, I'm gonna elevate just slightly above, find where my guideline is, and just chip into that area. Match into that guideline. I'm gonna work on below now. I'm going to comb towards me to help that over direction. Match to the guideline and cut. So I'm always looking at the roots for my over direction to help that over direction to check that I'm in the correct position. So coming to the final section probably doesn't need anything off, but we'll just check it. So again, comb goes in base of the comb hits the previous section. And now it just free falls over the top of that area from below. So now we're just gonna copy on the other side. So taking away half of that central section, working on the left side now. But this time I'm gonna comb away from myself. So I'm going to come away from myself to help that over direction slightly to compensate for the rounding of the head. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the layering at the top. This is gonna overfall this section above. So it's disconnecting, slight undercut with texture, but it's quite invisible, you don't really see it. So we're gonna work now on vertical sections, but every section either side is gonna be traveled towards that center section. So this is going to be triangular layer again, which concave shape creates longer length towards this corner of the section, which overlaps. So by doing so, before we cut the central position, we need to think about the length from the far corner 
how long that is going to be to travel through the middle into the middle to see how far it falls over the top of these sections. So I'm thinking of probably about this length. I'm just going to check the length on this corner. And yeah, that's going to over, overhang quite nicely. So just go a little bit above, take away a flat line. Now we're going to work just that little bit shorter. So we're going to push the hair away from us to come directly into the middle, find our guideline and match to the guideline. Final section, take it directly to that center position. Cut all that, most of that length off just above your guideline. Just to help you have control when you're chipping in. And again, comb into the root, into the middle of the section of the head and chip to create that texture. So now we have this length coming over the top. So we're gonna repeat that process on the opposite side. We're gonna stay on the same side of the head, but I'm gonna go towards myself to help that projection. So when you're working on that, make sure you comb this section out of the way at the crown. You don't want to bring any of your crown up and start cutting away. That's just for safety. So now we have this hair that overlaps this area. So now we're just going to focus on the fringe area. I'm going to analyze where I want to cut to, but I'm thinking about he's got a bit of a curl, a bit of a wave, so it is going to jump a little bit. So we're going to work back with the razor tool now, just to add some more softness. We're going to work in subdivided sections. So we're going to work on the center point being elevated higher so it's a bit softer. The two corners are going to be dropped lower in elevation so we create strength. So if I work on the channel towards the middle, half the section out the way. Now see how the hair starts to jump. So you can see where it's starting to go. So probably only about an inch. I want it above his eyes. So now you can see it just slightly jumps. Let's take a little bit more off. We can always analyze it when it's, when it's dry. Yeah. Work on that section above, just match into that guideline. Again, elevation coming straight out. I can feel with the bottom of my finger where my guidelines just jumped away. So that's my indication of when to cut. Okay, so now I have that middle part done. These two corners we're going to have. Working on the underneath, we're going to elevate low but a slight diagonal so we create more weight and more length towards the bottom. So my guys just jumped there, that's my indication, and we're just gonna cut that away. So now we have this separation from this heavier fringe, but with texture and softer through the center, but then the separation of texture on top. Now up to you, 
So if you want to create a bit more softness in the connection from the top to the front, then what I like to do sometimes is just texturize the very center, just connecting from that razoring at the front and the layering at the back. So if I just elevate up from the head, I can see that weight, that length. So guide, guide, and we're just gonna match that. Taking away some of the length first. Projecting straight out from the rounding of the head and just chip it. Just that section in the middle just softens throughout the center point, but leaving the thickness and the weight around the recession area. So, I wanna keep, I wanna keep some of the length in this recession area, but what I wanna do is just slightly take up this perimeter here, just to pop out his face a little bit. We'll analyze that when it's dry as well. We might take more off, but as I said, Josh's hair texture is different when it's dry and when it's wet, it does curl up quite a bit. So now we have our shape created. What we're gonna do is just check over it, check the perimeter. We take off a little bit around the ears. So it's not too fly away on the ends. Let's just check it all. So, with Josh's hair texture, it's a little bit dry, so we need a little bit of moisture, but what we want to create is something a little bit dry within itself, so a matte look. So what we're going to do actually is, going to use a bit of tough texture, just to give that grip, as I said, when he goes into the sea as he's a bit of a surfer, he loves that grip up of the texture. So around the bottom, we want that sort of texture, we want to thicken it up a little bit around the external area, just to grip up some extra texture around this area. The fringe I'm going to leave because we might texturize later. A little bit on top just to place within but not too much. I'm going to apply a small amount of world class wax just to give some hydration to the hair for when it's set. Only a small amount. To help it set I'm actually going to put a little bit of Premier paste in because Premier Paste does set itself and it also gives quite a matte look and it's quite nice for wet hair actually, especially if you want to naturally dry a position in. So a little bit of this on top in places, really get it in there. This almost gives this slight lived in feel as well to the hair as it dries. You can almost see it already as I place it in. So what we're going to do is leave Josh's hair to dry we're gonna create more, a little bit more of an editorial look. So we're gonna put some clips in there as place the hair into place so it can dry whilst we're cutting the next model. So I'm combing into a slight shape that I wanna create when it dries. Press into roots where you want it flatter perhaps. So this area underneath, just maybe grip the back base of your comb just to flatten some shape and to have this hair come over the top. So we're going to use some of these flat clips just to position the hair into some places that we want. See where the hair wants to go, visually see where the movement wants to be. Perhaps just make sure we hold this position in. So flat clips are quite nice because you won't see indents when it starts to dry with these type of clips. So we're just going to place a little bit on top as well. Just create that little bit more definition on top. Putting the layers together almost. So we're just gonna slightly diffuse the hair so we just add some heat to it whilst we end up drying, whilst cutting the next model. So I'm gonna use a low temperature, a low heat. We're just gonna hold it above. We're gonna hold it above so I don't frizz the hair up basically. 
If I'm always going from the sides or below, it's going to help frizz up and I'm not going to play around with the hair. So I'm just going to add some heat to it, just to help that set for a moment. So if I wasn't waiting around, if I didn't have time, and I was doing this in the salon or the barber shop, then perhaps we'd just carry on diffusing. But again, this look, you don't have to put clips within the hair. You can just dry it quite naturally, finger dry it, use a brush, mold it into shape. This, I think, is just a nice interesting way that's quite fashionable at the moment where you can create more texture. So again, not touching the hair, it's going to frizz up. Just leaving it. Let, us do it, let it do its own thing. So now we're going to create one of our looks that's going to be more of a graduated look. So if we look on our mood board, you can see that we have this slight mullet, but a longer sculptured look, more of a slick back look that's really on trend for catwalks, fashion, but also on online content and through the barbering industry itself. So we've seen this more medium length with a slight length coming around the ears, a parting as such, and creating that more width within the shape. So we're creating slight graduation within this look, but a more medium style. So let's get our model over and I'll show you the map and what we're gonna do. So here we have our model MJ, again, a great looking guy. So what we're gonna create from the mood boards is more of this longer length that's swept back. Now to talk about the map, all we've got is a simple box section on top where the small trapezoid zone just around the crown. So for this look, I'm gonna place a little bit of classic gel just for the graduation on the sides. This is gonna help me section. So when I am sectioning with my comb, it's gonna be able to grip against the scalp quite nicely. So I can be more consistent with my sections and have that better grip throughout. So we're gonna evenly place this and only on the graduation below. So first of all, we're gonna work on our graduation on the sides. And then we're gonna to work towards the back of the crown area and then towards the layering on top. So let's begin on our first side. So we're gonna start working with very slightly diagonal sections. So we have control of the horizontal shape as well as the vertical shape whilst we are graduating. So through the beginning, it's gonna be on base. So it's mimicking the head shape. When we come to the rounding part of the head, it's gonna over direct to the previous. So we can extend more length towards the back. When we come from below at the bottom of the nape, we're gonna elevate and twist so we can create some more length towards the bottom. So we're gonna begin with our first section diagonal for our guideline. So I'm gonna analyze the length that I want it's gonna be very slightly longer towards the top and shorter towards the bottom. Only very slightly because I'm creating a much longer length. So I'm not going tight towards the scalp. So analyze my length and cut my first guide. I want enough length just to tuck around the ear basically. Next section just above and again, we're gonna project the hair so they match together within each section. We're gonna use the comb from underneath to elevate and find our guideline. And follow. Next section just above is gonna come round to the back of the ear towards the nape. We're gonna hold with our finger and tap the hair in line. So we don't have to always use clips. And again, that gel works for you. Because the gel is only a small amount and it's in wet hair, it's not gonna dry up and go crispy. So working on the above, use the head position of your model to really help that position of the angle that you're creating. Think about your body position as well. So my elevation is good elevation where I'm not creating too much weight. I'm thinking about where this top weight is going to sit. I don't want it to come too high. I don't want it to be too low, so it's not too heavy. So again, follow the angle. My body position 
is going to keep changing as I'm coming around the head. I'm only cutting to my first two knuckles to keep that consistency of tension. Now, when I come in line with the occipital bone, we're going to twist up and cut to that elevation. Now I'm going to make sure I copy that on every other section below. So I keep that weight at the bottom. Now what we're looking for is more of this longer length towards the bottom, but quite textured and flared. So it's not a precise shape that we're creating, just this flared slight mullet effect at the bottom. That's all we're going for here. Now, when I come here, I need a little bit of over direction. So my comb's gonna come over the top to help that projection to travel to my previous section. I come in line with the occipital bone. Again, I'm gonna move around and elevate and cut to that position. Comb for the roots to create even tension and to stop any root drag. Match to that guideline and keep on following. Now coming to that obstacle bone, once again, I'm gonna twist, move my position, create that high elevation. So now you can sort of see this graduation really beautifully coming back, but then it gets longer towards the bottom for this slight mullet. Okay, we're gonna repeat this on the opposite side to eventually crossing over. So, we've, com we've completed this side. Now we need to work on this side. To get the best balance, we're gonna try and find our length to go from. So, for my first diagonal section, I'm just gonna measure this from using my comb. So, this is a really good tip. So, finding out from using the notches in your comb to find that length. So, it's two away from the middle. Gonna find that just from that temple area and just match that right there a little bit low tension so we're not pulling the skin and that's going to be my indication of length so beginning on this side we create our first diagonal section for our guideline and remember we have that little bit length at the top to work from so low tension for the first one so you don't stretch the skin a guideline from the top and very slightly shorter towards the bottom Check that. Yeah, perfect.
So now we have this beautiful graduation either side, but then it dips out and we flare out and we've got this mullet towards the bottom. Now we have all of this weight that we haven't cut in the centre point. So what we're going to do is cross over from the middle and over direct all of that to our guideline on the side. From our cross graduation, we have this weighted area in the bottom here. It comes a little bit low. So what we're gonna do, if we look on the side profile, I'm just gonna go in vertical sections now and create a very slightly flatter shape so we can flatter this area within the back. But I'm not gonna focus on anything below it than the occipital bone. So straight through the middle section, from the central position. My elbow is going to be nice and high. I'm going to follow what I've created. I can see that guideline from just below. That's from our connection that goes down into our mullet area. So I'm going to follow to that guideline just there and just create a slightly flatter shape. So it heightens where the weight sits basically. half our section and a slight section to our right. Now he's actually a little bit flat in the center, so we're still gonna be on base. Now thinking about the head position to get the best angle of your distribution line, your cutting line. So repeating this as we carry on. If there's nothing to come off, then don't take it, but I can just see some very minimal amounts off. So now we've slightly compressed this inner shape. Now we're gonna section from up above in this crown area zone. But because it's quite long, we don't wanna to create too much weight. So we're not gonna keep on creating more length and weight towards the top. So we're gonna carry on with vertical sections as we were doing so but we're going to change our elevation very slightly. We're going to find our guide from underneath. We're going to push our comb to the root and we're going to slightly project the hair just very slightly up just to help deflate that shape. Find our guideline from below. We're going to half that section again and like I said the head is quite flat in this area so we're going to be on base mimicking the head shape. So comb towards me flat to the root as I elevate slightly out I'm going to project the hair back but with a slight bit of elevation only cut into those first two knuckles for that good tension. Now the head is starting to round, so my final section, I'm going to over direct. So looking at the root, the tip is to look at the root. That's the key. To look at the root, look at the projection, look where the hair is going for either section. So matching to my guideline, slight elevation. Now we're just going to continue this on the opposite side of this area.
We're just gonna match this towards our graduation on the sides. See if there's any overhang, there we go. So we've released the top zone area now, we're gonna start layering. We're gonna create a flat shape, so it's horizontally, as well as a flat shape vertically. By doing so, we're gonna work vertically within our section. So we're gonna aim for the ridge of the nose, create our first profile section. Use clips if you like, just to keep nice and clean and consistent. Aiming for the opposite side of the ridge of the nose. Aim for using the guideline from the back to travel towards the top. So, cone goes into the roots, slightly up, fingers go in, elevate straight up. We can see our guideline at the back and we're going to cut matching to that guideline, a nice flat line. We're going to keep holding the hair as we travel forward to have good control. We're gonna half that central section. Now, if I just analyze MJ's head shape, it's still a little bit flat in the center. So our next section, again, is gonna be on base. Find my guideline just above. Just match into that guideline. Next section is going to over direct. So cone goes in, pushing the roots into that previous section. Elevate straight up from the head. Find my guideline, just at the bud there, and follow that straight line. check with our final section if there needs to be a little bit more hair. Just brushing off those tiny, tiny bits. So straight through the center again, and we're gonna repeat this on the opposite side. So half in that central section, and moving towards our next section. Now I'm gonna stay on the same side to help my balance, but I'm gonna comb into the root towards myself to help that over direction. Straight up, follow the guideline and match to that guideline. Always keeping hold of your section, but working step by step towards the front. So now if we cross check the top, we should find a flat horizontal shape. Great. With this type of look, we're gonna create more of a parting 
within this look. So we're gonna focus on where we want the parting to sit. Now, a lot of people just go straight from the recession. I wanna go that little bit higher so it puts a more focus point onto his eyes. So just above into the middle of his eye, we're gonna take that. And this is gonna be our parting area. Now, what I want to do is connect all of the top towards the sides of the graduation. So I'm gonna focus on this side first, but we're gonna leave most of that frontal area out of the way. So a slight triangular section, just to keep this out of the way. So we're gonna work with horizontal sections so we keep most of the weight with it. So you don't have to layer the top, you could just section everything towards the side. That will create more, more weight, more length to this classic style. So I wanted to create more layers on top. So when he does dry his hair, it creates a little bit more volume. It reduces the weight on top. So we're gonna follow the sections above, horizontal sections into the guideline underneath for our graduation. We're gonna leave this frontal area out of the way because I want to keep that slightly disconnected so it comes over the top. Okay, so on the opposite side now, we're only gonna stop up to the parting. We're not gonna go beyond that because we go beyond that, it's gonna affect our weight or layering for the opposite side. So we're only gonna come up to the parting lines. Now when I come to the very front where it jumps from the top point above the recession, I'm just gonna extend a little bit more length in that area. So now we have this free flow graduation below, but we have this weight sitting in this area. So we've come to the end of the cut, but now we're gonna style. Now MJ's hair's quite fine, so I'm gonna use tough texture just to grip up a little bit of the hair, create some volume into areas. I don't wanna full on dry the hair, I just wanna create some volume, because afterwards we're gonna use more, more of the products to give a slight wet look. Okay, let's begin blow drying. Creating a little bit of volume, thickness within the tough texture. Now we're going to use some products to give more of a classic look. So I'm going to give a bit of moisture to the hair, so just damp it down. I've got the volume from the root, but the mid lengths and ends, we're just going to dampen down a little bit to increase that shine and dilute the classic gel that we're going to put in now. So we're going to use a decent amount of classic gel. We're going to place this through the sides and back first. So great comb to use is the wide tooth comb. It's just going to help separate those layers, but it's not going to collapse the shape too much. So the classic gel is putting that shine within that hair. We've got a little bit of volume from the root area. The wide tooth comb is gonna help with that separation. What I am gonna use is a, just a tiny bit of beard oil within the hair, just a small amount, just to intensify the shine throughout. So I'm gonna place this a little bit more just through the sides, just gloss over it very slightly. So what I'm looking for when we do start shooting is seeing this more length around the external part of the mullet. And that's what we're seeing really on these trends, catwalks and you know, online as well. We're seeing this mullet just come out slightly from a straight profile shot, just coming out from out the back. But we have that classic look with the gel, which gets quite tight towards the skin. So it does create quite a modern vibe rather than using just pomade, 
which gives a more of a classic vibe. But yeah, this is classic, but also, as I'm trying to say, it does grip the head a little bit better using the gel, the more wet look, which gives that more hug heading modern vibe. So finishing off MJ's look, just to recap, we had the top zone just being a box section, where the small trapezoid zone just around the crown. We work with cross graduation classically on the sides, just very slightly longer towards the top, but with a good length for enabling it to curve around the ear. We're working with diagonal sections and when we come around to the nape area, we twisted and elevated up, giving this longer length at the bottom. Then we worked internally through this middle part section just to flatten the shape slightly, working vertically. Then we released this area around the crown where we worked vertically as well, but we raised the elevation just very slightly to slightly deflate the shape to, to reduce the volume basically. Towards the top was just classically square layering vertically and horizontally. We then connected the size to the graduation, but remembering on the parting line on this side, we didn't go above the parting line connection to that graduation. And there we have it, our classic look with MJ, giving this modern vibe, this wet look with 1922 by JMQ. So now let's go and get the other model, and we're just gonna finish off the details for him. So now we have Josh here. He's, his hair's set now, just naturally. We're gonna take out these clips. Now we're just gonna assess what's been created. Just comb it out very slightly. It's created the movement that we wanted. We're just gonna see what's created throughout. We're not gonna play around with it too much. So I'm just gonna shorten this corner here. I've kept the weight in, which is nice. I'm just gonna shorten the length. And create a little bit more softness into this fringe middle part. So by doing so, we're just gonna elevate a little bit high and we're gonna slice into it just to create a nice soft layering within. So we could just scatter it so areas could be softer with higher elevation, or we could just pinpoint areas and put lower elevation in to create a little bit more strength, but a little bit soft just towards the ends. It's completely up to you. Creativity is up to you. What you see, what you feel is going to work. Just going to twist areas to create more of a softer texture as well. More scattered approach with the texture, just to emphasize areas. But you can really see the shape now. So we've got this layering on top that just falls over this disconnection. So we've really reduced the shape. This has created more of a leaner silhouette. So let's put some product in now. So again, we're gonna use a little bit more hydration with Josh's hair, as it is a little bit dry in areas. So we're gonna emulsify a little bit of this into the palm with actually a little bit of matte measure. So a smaller bit of matte measure, which is gonna slightly set, but the well-class wax is gonna give a little bit of hydration. and just tweaking fine little areas. And there we have it, our final look. So once again, this is a layering technique. We started from the back area. We worked with a razor underneath, creating more triangular layers towards the bottom. 
Then we work towards the sides using scissor technique, using the angle of the head position to pivot with the angle of our elevation to create longer length towards the bottom. Then we worked on the contours. I just wanted to show you the importance of how high to work with the contours so we can create that more leaner shape. Now through this back area, this top zone, we created vertical sections, but we elevated slightly up, a longer length so it collapsed over it. On top was cut with layering, a square shape. Everything was concave, so it overdirects to the center, so it concaved and falled over the top. And then the frontal area was cut towards the front fringe area, softness through the center, and then lower elevation around the corners to create strength. And there we have it guys, our final look. Thank you so much for watching this webinar guys. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned a lot, or at least something, and I hope to see you all very soon.